give it a medium gray color. Let's render it again so we can see the scene with the V-ray plane. So now we have a horizon line and now we need to add a V-ray sun. Click lights and choose V-ray and select V-ray sun. Place the sun in your scene and answer yes to this environment map. It will give you a blue sky. Render to see the sun's light. V-ray sun parameters are based on the brightness and power of the real sun. If we enable global illumination, the image gets even worse. Now you see less due to the light bouncing all over the place. And that's mm, because the V-ray sun is designed to work with a V-ray camera. So let's add a V-ray physical camera. On your scene, place the camera where you can see the shadows uh, on the walls or on the ground. You know, place it about eye level from the ground about 5 feet 10 inches or so. Change your view to the cameras and let's render to see the results. As you can see this is the view from the camera and the sun's light as we are using just the default values and we're not making any changes yet. Select the camera and let's see the parameters. The camera uses real world parameters like f-stop, light from the sky, uh, and, a, and a lot of other things. The f-stop value creates the effect of depth of field. In order to keep the, the light from changing, you must change the shutter speed values in proportion to the f-stop values as well. Take a look at this chart I made. If we start at the default values, f-stop is at 8.0 and shutter speed is about 200. Those default numbers produce this image and it's quite acceptable as you can see. Now if we wanted to get some blur in the background for a depth of field effect, we can change both numbers as shown in the chart. Let's change the f-stop to 2 and the shutter speed to 3200. We will leave all the other numbers untouched. Just working with these two. Now we're going to render a region area so we can see the result and we can compare with the rest of the image. Notice how the light remains the same in the image. Now check depth of field over here in the sampling and render it again. This time we see some blurriness in the background. You know the depth of field area is between uh, these bars. The center of the uh, the camera is pointing at the subject and the two lines one in front and one behind defines the depth of field. Everything else is blurred by the camera that creates the depth of field effect. Now let's change the values a bit more. If we make the f-stop much smaller, we have to increase the speed and this will create a lot more blur in the background. If we change the f-stop and you don't change the shutter speed, we can control the amount of light in the scene. In this case it's going to look a little bit darker because we closed up the f-stop. If we increase the number, if we go to a higher number, we will get a sharper image. Again matching uh, the numbers in the chart so the light doesn't change. The point is to leave the sun as it is and use the camera to control the light. Now let's get back to the sun parameters. The, the size multiplier makes the sun larger. 
The light is the same, but the shadows become a lot softer and blurred, as if it was a cloudy day. If you change the number of the multiplier to 40 and render again, we expect to see uh, the shadows turn a lot softer than before. Now you may have to change the sky color to an overcast look just to match these shadows, but maybe you like to work this way just for a specific effect. A very small sun will produce very sharp shadows. You know, this is how you control partially the shadows and the, the way the light is being cast in the, in the scene. To get sharper renders, we can adjust some parameters and reduce render time as well. In the Setup tab, open Render Elements and add a sample rate, which is very important. Lighting, reflections, and shadows, if you want. We will look at the sample rate in this case. So click on Add here and select the ones you need. In this case, we need a sample rate more than anything just to work with this. But we'll select the other ones as well. You know, shadows, reflects, reflections. Vray is going to give us one page for each one of these um, instances. After they show up on the list, make them active and check Enable. All right. So click OK. It's just telling you that uh, even though it says it's uh, off here, it will work. So render the scene again. Open the RGB tab. You will see the layers 3ds Max has saved here. You can uh, analyze these areas and see if you find any noise or any oversampling or not enough light, etc. To the untrained eye, the image appears to be fine, you know, but analyzing the V-ray sample rate will help us make the images uh, sharper. So let's open the uh, V-ray sample rate. The red pixels indicate oversampling. The blue pixels show that there's some kind of balance, anti-aliasing in, in that area. Usually, we worry about the edges of, of things here. We will use this method to adjust the oversampling. The sample rate helps us with shadows, reflections, and other issues. In this tutorial, we will adjust for better anti-aliasing and image clarity. On Render Setup, open V-Ray tab. Then open the Adaptive Image Sampler. Change the max subdivs from 4 to 8 and render again. Notice that some of the red color has turned blue. That's much better. If we raise that number again, we, we will see what happens. Now it's much better. You know, we could be okay with that. Some of anti-aliasing here it has been simplified. You can see here now the line is much sharper because there's less conflict between the two colors that are meeting here. Now you can control the overall light of the scene using the color adjustment tabs in the frame buffer itself. 
you know, if you click over here, you know, V-Ray frame, uh, frame Buffer has some controls to help you manage images before you save them. Some of these up here are self-explanatory and some aren't. At the bottom of the window there are some controls for color correction, including exposure, contrast, hue, etc. You know, it's sort of a simple photo editing software. It doesn't really correct the light or anything, but it gives the appearances, you know, of of uh, uh, the image being either underexposed or overexposed. You just have to remember these are all global changes. If you don't want to edit the image any more than this, then this will probably do the job. Otherwise, I suggest Photoshop, which is always the preferred choice for um, post-production. After making some adjustments here, you may leave them checked, and these changes are a sort of presets that can be saved for future use. After you close the uh, color correction uh, tabs, you can just turn on and off the switches to see your changes before and after. Like I said, these are just global changes. You will also find here the lens effects panel that adds bloom and glare to the image. You know, I think these effects are pretty cool. They could come handy in some instances. You know, like a foggy or misty or humid day or, or, or you know, something that has affected the, the lens of the camera. So basically that's, that's it. V-Ray is designed to work with V-Ray camera. Materials and textures will also change the way sunlight works. Here's an example using this setup. You know, once you settle on the settings you like, save it as a template and import your drawings into the scene and you will always get this consistent look of, of your sunlight. I hope this was useful for you. Thanks for watching and your comments are very welcome. Don't forget to subscribe and like it if you, if you wish. Thank you. Bye.